Okay. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, if you guys have your Bibles, turn to Revelation chapter 2. And uh, we're going to pick up, we, we left off uh, finishing chapter 1. And uh, we'll go ahead and uh, we're going to be talking about the church of Ephesus today. Um, we're going to try to emphasize Ephesus. And so I hang out with Pastor Rich too much. He does all that stuff. I can't do it. I tried. It didn't work. Sorry. All right. Well, let's go ahead and pray, guys. Lord, thank you again uh, for this time. We pray you would, uh, uh, that you would give us ears to hear, Lord, your word. As we go through your word, may it not be simply uh, gaining knowledge, Lord, uh, but may we understand it. I pray that we would also teach it to our children, uh, Lord, that we would teach it to those who, who, whom we're discipling, Lord, and uh, help us to be on guard, Lord. Help us to, to stay focused. And uh, we just thank you so much, Lord, that it's all about you. Help us to stay in spirit, Lord, that your, your Holy Spirit would just continue to fill us and, and guide us um, as we go through your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, um, God is writing to these seven churches in Asia Minor. Ephesus is going to be the first church we're going to see here. And these seven letters we saw already in chapter 1 um, are directed at the seven angels over the seven churches, right? And, and each message really describes Jesus Christ, which is interesting. These letters are uh, of reproof, they're of uh, correction, they're of uh, re rebuke and reassurance and, and so much more. So as we get into it, um, it's, it's a blessing, it really is. So these churches are located, again, in Asia Minor, um, about 80 mile radius from each other. So they're in uh, modern day Turkey area, um, which is a, a, a blessing. Um, let's go ahead and start, guys. Revelation chapter 2. Let's just go ahead and read verses 1 through 7. It says, To the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands, Jesus says, I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars. And you have persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love remember therefore from where you have fallen repent and do the first works again or else i will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent but this you have that you hate the deeds of the nicolaitans which i also hate he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Woo! So much here. This is amazing. There's, oh, it's, I love Revelation, guys. I don't know about you, but I'm, I love it. It's one of those, when I was a kid, I was always, you know, like, I just, I loved it, right? I couldn't get enough of it. Um, so I can't, I love uh, the this portion as well. Um, but if you're taking notes, we're going to look at really four major sections, if you will, uh, of these seven verses. Kind of just broke them all up. The first section we're going to see, uh, it looks at the, let's look at the information given to us, the information that is given to us in verses one and two. Uh, first of all, we see it involves an angel, an angel. In verse one, notice it says to the angel, of the church of Ephesus writes. And so the word angel simply means a messenger, or we would say a minister. That's what angels have been called, uh, what we see their role, if you will, throughout scripture and what they do. And, and uh, it seems that each of these churches uh, were assigned an angel. Uh, when I say an angel, I'm really talking about an actual intelligent being, an actual angel. Um, there's other people that have different viewpoints, but 
Uh, we're going to get in as we go through Revelation. We're going to see uh, the description of these angels. And so they're actual literal angels, which is interesting. Uh, and some of them, if we saw one right now, if God's like, oh, you guys want to see an angel? Here it is. Bah! We'd all be like, ah! Uh, they don't they don't look like the pictures i tried drawing them and it's like mm, eh, i don't know i'd rather see them when i get to heaven um but let's go to the second thing here it involves a city a city in verse one notice it's ephesus right Eph ephesus is located in modern day turkey uh, like we talked about the uh, asia minor uh, it was not the capital, but it was actually uh, one of the largest uh, cities there in Asia Minor. Uh, they were a very wealthy city, a very pagan city, a very uh, uh, just just out there kind of a, a people. And people did not... Um, uh, Ephesus really wasn't a place that people kind of liked to go. If, if you were a believer, if you're in the world, it was like it, you, you loved it. Uh, but Paul actually went to Ephesus uh, several times, actually, did some missions work there. Paul wrote to the saints of Ephesus, uh, the, uh, the letter of Ephesians. Actually, believe it or not, um, Ephesians is written some 30-some years, I don't know the math, but 30-some years before John uh, would receive this letter and give this letter out of Revelation. Uh, and so we got like a 30-some year gap there uh, between both letters. And so Paul, uh, he did go there to the church of Ephesus on his second missionary journey. Uh, there in Acts chapter 18. Also, he went on his third missionary journey. Uh, there in, if you guys remember in Acts chapter 19, uh, man, Paul is there in Ephesus. He's there for about three years. And he's given the gospel. People are getting saved and they're hearing from the Lord. He's teaching the word of God. And of course, there's always division in the church, right? There's always somebody that does the whispering and the backbiting and the, right? And so Demetrius, he, he's the one who started all the uproars there. And uh, anyway, you can read in Acts chapter 19, but uh, so much stuff happened. They did not like uh, Paul there because he's, he's giving the word of God. Um, and, and these, I, I think, I was just so encouraged when I considered um, Paul is in this type of a, a land, if you will, of a people that were caught up in sexual immorality. They were, you know, they were murderers. They were pagans. They were caught up in disgusting stuff like bestiality, right? They were uh, idolatry. I mean, you name it. These are the type of people who were coming to the Lord. And so Paul is just being a servant of the Lord. He goes to Ephesus, falls in love with the, uh, the Lord there in, with the people, and he's presenting the word of God. God's doing a work. Um, and I just love the heart of Paul, right? Where he's like, let's, let's keep going, right? He's not, he's not bowing down uh, to uh, the demands of the world, right? Where the world's like, you need to shut down right now. <laughs> he's like, oh, I'll go to the next city. Uh, but one thing I did love about Paul, and I was just kind of chewed on this, is he didn't, he presented the gospel, right? And, and, and when he presented the gospel, he didn't change the gospel to fit the culture, right? Well, that's what a lot of people do these days. And Paul knew it was the gospel, obviously, that changes the culture. It's the emergent movement. If you guys have heard of that, you can look it up. Uh, that says, you know, we, we do need to change the gospel so that we can uh, allow the world to come into the church and eventually we'll give them the gospel, right? I, I, remember, I know several people that have that mindset where it's like, what? We, we need to be more like the world if we're going to reach the world. They say, and they, they try to influence you in that way. And it's like, wait, that doesn't make sense. I knew a leader at a, a big church here in Appleton, and he was in charge of the men's ministry. And, and they, they drink alcohol together. They, they call it beer and Bible, right? And I was like, did you guys actually, you guys actually go through the word? together and they're like no we don't really get it we're, we're trying to get to know everybody first and so it's like oh man this is like shocker stuff to me to you it's probably like yeah they all do it but i'm like what <laughs> right? so by the time you get drunk then it's time to get in the word but you you know you're not even the right my anyways i'm sorry i'm just complaining now but you, you don't compromise the gospel right you let the gospel 
speak freely for itself, right? Because it's powerful and it changes the heart of many, most of us, right? Our hearts were changed through the gospel. It was the goodness of the Lord, his loving kindness that drew us near. And so uh, I love that about Paul. Anyways, let's come to the third thing. It involves a person. A person in verses one, uh, actually right here in the middle of verse one, it says, these things says he. So this person is Jesus Christ himself. Isn't that amazing? Um, he's the author uh, to the church of Ephesus of this letter here. And so let's go on here. The information we get uh, about Jesus in verses 1 and 2 uh, really involve five things here. So if you're taking notes, we're going to look at five simple things about the information that, that is given to us about Jesus. The first is it, it involves his seven stars, his seven stars in verse 1. It says, these things says he who holds the seven stars. So if you guys remember uh, right there in Revelation chapter 1 verse 20, uh, it was uh, the seven stars representing the seven angels that are over the seven churches. And so they're not only messengers, they're also ministers. They are uh, these angels are intelligent beings. They literally live among us, and they've been here from day one. And, and so if you're still watching History Channel and UFOs and all that, you're like, whoa, is there really another intelligent being among us? And you're like, wow, there's the answer. Yes, there is. And, and there's angels. We call other uh, fallen angels demons, right? Uh, they do live among us. They're very intelligent um, and, and so we could get into all that later. But let's go to the second thing about Jesus is it involves his right hand. His right hand. Notice in verse 1, it says, These things says he who holds the seven stars. Notice in his right hand. So his right hand speaks of power. His right hand speaks of authority. And, and so when we get to chapter 5, uh, verse 1, we see that Jesus is holding in his right hand uh, the scroll, if you will. And, and we would say this is the, the scroll, the seven seals, right? Uh, we would say the title deed of earth, right? He is, he's, he's got the ownership, and it's all, all within his right hand. And, and so it speaks to the fact that Jesus is in charge of everything. Isn't that amazing? I love it. The universe is his, the seven stars, the seven angels over the seven churches. It's all his, guys. Isn't that cool? I mean, we, we're barely at what? Verse 1, 2, right? Verse 1. And we already get this uh, idea that God is in control. Amen? Amen? And, and so whatever problems you might be going through, I mean, there's a lot of problems we all go through, right? Relationship problems, uh, emotional problems, physical problems, right? All kinds of problems, uh, that we go through, rest assured and know that Jesus cares for you, that he loves you. He, he's under, he's, he knows what's happening, and, and he desires you to still come to him, though. Still, he, he sees what's happening, but he still wants you to come and talk to him about it because we're not a religion, right? It's a relationship. He, he wants to talk about it with you, right? He wants to hear from you. So, so it's a good thing to, to understand that he's in control. It's also good to understand he's not only in, under control of, you know, all the universe, we would say, uh, but also over eternal life, uh, which I thought was interesting. It says in John chapter 10, verse 28, Jesus says, And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Amen. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I love that. Uh, if you're his, guess what? He's the good shepherd. You know what the good shepherd does? He protects us. Isn't that great? And so when danger comes around, he's got you. He's not going to let anybody snatch you away. Uh, I, I love that. Anyways, um, a third bit of information about Jesus is uh, the seven golden lampstands. The seven golden lampstands here in verse 1. It says, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. And if you guys remember, 
the seven golden lampstands there in chapter 1, verse 20, uh, is speaking really to the seven churches. Um, and, and so uh, let's come to the fourth bit of information about Jesus. It involves uh, his position. No, same verse right here, verse, actually verse 2. It says, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. Now notice Jesus' location. Did you guys catch that? He's in the midst of the church. He's in the midst, he's in the center uh, of the church, right? He was there from the beginning. He'll be there to the end. He's the Alpha and the Omega, right? The beginning and the end. And Jesus, he needs to be the center of the church. He needs to be the center of everything that's happening within the church. And it's a sad thing that today, um, a lot of churches today, uh, they don't center on Jesus. They center more on programs. They'll center more on activities. They'll center on budgets and, uh, uh, what is it, like church um, building. But yeah, you name it, all that stuff. Uh, but Jesus, he needs to be the center of the church, not only corporately, he needs to be the center of the church, also individually in our own hearts, right? How, could he, how can he rule and reign if you're not allowing him to, it's like, oh, Lord, I got eight hours of work, though. So you got, you know, you got 10 minutes right now, <laughs> right? No, he needs to be a part of your work, too. But, Lord, uh, you know, I got this sports thing that I'm doing. So you know, let him be a part of that as well. How can you glorify God in all that you do, right? Don't, don't push him out. Let him rule and reign in every aspect of your life. I think it's a beautiful thing. Um, and so... Um, but notice also, though, Jesus is not just sitting in the midst of the church. Did you guys notice that? What is he doing? He's walking in the midst of the church. Walking is just speaking of actively. He's active, right? Uh, my wife is very active. Uh, if I get sick or something, I'm stuck with a headache and I just want to go to sleep, uh, the door is going to open several times because my wife's like, I got to do this. I got to do that. I gotta do that. Right? My kids, they're active. And it's like, ugh. I can't sleep. Um, it's one of those things, right? There's just several people that are just active. That's just what they, and, but I love it when I apply it to Jesus, right? I want him to be active in my life. Uh, I want him to be active in every part of my life. And so uh, is, is he, think about it, is he active uh, in your life? Are you allowing him to do a work in your life? It's a good question. Uh, a, a fifth bit of information we have uh, about Jesus involves his knowledge, his knowledge. Notice in verse 2, it says, I know your works. Stop right there. He knows your, he knows your works. In other words, he knows your toil, right? Your, your, your works. This is the same phrase, by the way. It's going to be repeated to all seven churches. He's going to say the same thing. Hey, I know your works, which means the church is active. They're, they're, they're working uh, you, you right for the Lord. So each each message uh, has a promise, by the way, of the seven churches. Uh, when he says, I know your works, and then he's going to give them a promise as well. But the word know, uh, by the way, this word means a complete knowledge. Jesus has a full understanding. And understand, the, the point is, in all seven churches, or in every aspect of the church, Jesus knows what's going on. He knows, right? Not, not only does he know what's happening, uh, in fact, he, he not only knew past, right, what was going to happen and what did happen, he knows what's going to happen. He has a foreknowledge, right? Uh, he's elected us, and, and, and there's, we've, we've been placed, we've been positioned in a place. He knows what's coming down. Nothing goes through the hands of God uh, outside of his authority, right? It, it all comes up to the Lord, and it's his decision, uh, have you considered my servant Job, right? You remember back in, the, in Job? Uh, nothing slips through the hand of the Lord. I, I thank the Lord for that. Did you guys know that God knows everything that's happening in and through your life? I don't know about you, but there's a lot of areas in my life where I'm like, Lord, you... Uh, there's a, there's a, your flesh wants to just vent, right? That's what venting is. It's Proverbs says it's foolish, by the way. Um, but you just want to just... Blah, and 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 uh, but he but then when you realize he is in control he knows what he's doing uh, then it's it's just one of those things of like oh 
there's peace, right? Even in the midst of all this chaos, it's like, oh, Lord, you're so good. You know, right? And then you're able to talk to him. And, and when we pray, uh, the purpose of our prayer ought to be to glorify God, right? And Lord, okay, how can I pray about this? Well, you can pray, Lord, may it be your will, right? Uh, how can you, well, you can consider what scripture says and apply it to whatever your situation is. Uh, there's a lot. But anyways, um, he knows everything. He sees all things. Job chapter 34, verse 12 or 21, it says, For his eyes are on the ways of man. He sees all his steps. It goes on and on. Proverbs 15, verse 3, The eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on the evil and the good. Hebrews 4.13, and there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. Now, understand God knows all, he sees all, he understands all, and, and one day, guys, we are going to have to give uh, an account, right? We're going to have to, we're going to have to stand before the Lord, and we can't fool him with anything, right? And so he knows your works, church, right? He sees, and I thank the Lord for that because uh, our goal shouldn't be to be seen by man. Our goal should be seen by, by God, right? Don't let your left hand know what your right is doing. And we should, you know, not only your, your prayer closet life, right? Do not speak to the Lord, have a personal relationship, but also our works ought to be on to the Lord. And guess what? He sees those. I thank the Lord for that. It's a good thing. Let, let's come on to the second thing. Let's look at commendation commendation now jesus uh begins to affirm or commend uh ephesus here and it, this really involves six things if you're taking notes uh number one it involves labor uh in verse two it says your labor and and this is the the i, I would say the first well commendation right the first pat on the back right where jesus is like hey good job by the way hey you know thumbs up to this right and what's the first thing he gives them a thumbs up in fact look at look at verse three in the middle of verse three it says and have labored uh for my name's sake and have not become weary uh you know the word labor here speaks of uh working onto exhaustion you guys know what i'm talking about have you ever been there where you just work so much and at the end of the day, you know, you're already like so tired. You're just staring at the wall like, oh, <laughs> when do I got to go? Oh, I just got here. Oh, no. Right. Uh, but it's it, today that's that's many people. They come to church and they're not uh, intended. Uh, to work to the point of exhaustion they, they come to the church uh, and they just want to sit right but that's not the case for uh, the church of ephesus the church of ephesus they were active they were involved uh, they were contacting one another they were meeting the needs of the church right uh, and so they were constantly active uh, to the point where they were just they're exhausted uh, and now let's look at the next thing here it number two it involves patience 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 in verse two uh, it says your patience in fact look at verse three again and you have persevered and have patience uh, uh i'm sorry verse three it says and have not become weary at the end there so this this church persevered right they didn't quit uh they didn't give up even though they were working and laboring to the point uh even of exhaustion uh they were serving the lord day and night uh i'm sure their, their sleep was great right because they're working all day and when the time night came it's like <sighs> they were snoring wonderfully uh, but they didn't give up they didn't quit the word patience by the way um it means to bear up under a load to bear up under a load it, waiting to to endure and and so paul said in fact in galatians 6 9 he says and let us not grow weary while doing good for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart um in psalm 27 13 he said it says i would have lost heart unless i had believed that i would see the goodness of the lord in the land of the living yeah uh, oftentimes guys people 
they don't persevere, right? Uh, they don't have patience. They don't want to bear up under a load. Uh, and, and so, uh, because they're, they're, the idea really is there is because they're serving in the flesh, right? When you're serving in the flesh, uh, you're, you're, you're not working in the resources that God's given you, and thus you, you burn out right you bum out right it's like oh now i have to go do this and, and and but when you're working in the spirit it's a get to it's a wonderful thing because now you're working with the resources that god provides under his power it's through his grace right and if it's by his grace that means we had to humble ourselves to receive his grace and so to work under his uh under his spirit uh, it, well, Zechariah 4, 6, I don't know if I have it or not. Uh, it's not by might nor by power, but by, by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts, right? And so it's not by our own flesh and what we can do and, and what we can say. Uh, in fact, I just clicked on Hebrews 12. Uh, Hebrews 12, verse 28 says, Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably, with reverence and godly fear oh. so uh, we ought to be ex we ought to be working in the grace of god when you are working in the grace of god you are now that's what's acceptable in the eyes of god don't you want your work to be seen by god or do you want it to be seen by man there is people in the church by the way that only serve to be seen by man they they literally they, that's all they want. If they're not going to be seen by man, psh, I'm not doing whatever work that is, right? Uh, but unless they're out in the open, right? And that's, we don't know the hearts of man, right? We don't know, uh, but God does, right? And so the heart of man, if that heart of man is, is not to be seen and, and wants to be seen by God, to get, literally give him the glory, praise the Lord. He sees your works, right? It's a wonderful thing. Um, let's come to the third area of commendation. It involves their convictions, their convictions. Notice in verse 2, uh, it says, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And so they, they couldn't stand evil. Uh, their conviction was too strong, if you will, toward evil. And, and today, man, sad to say there's many churches today that bear evil. They, they, they're okay. They welcome it. And they, they allow it into the church, which they shouldn't. If you guys do a quick Google search or a Wikipedia and you type in uh, churches that uh, accept their, their LGBT accepting churches, uh, you're going to be shocked at the list of all of these that come on. Uh, this church was one of them, by the way. I did a little Appleton one. I was like, ah, that better change. <laughs> uh, anyways, I, I don't think I don't think they're reading the Bible at all, right? I think when you start reading the Word, uh, that's when you know you look at Martin Luther. That's when Re Reformation came in, right? It was like, wait a minute, you start reading the Word for yourself, and you're like, wait a minute, I've been deceived this whole time, and you start to take a stand for the truth, right? Um, but evil, it, it, you know, it, it, it can't it, it creeps into the Church of Ephesus, but Ephesus is the type of people that will not permit it. Ain't that amazing? Have you hung out with certain people where, the, you know, there's the, the certain compromise, whether it be on TV or someone is talking and they're cursing around them and they don't correct it? And then you hang out with another group of people and they just won't uh, tolerate anything. They're, they hear a curse and they're like, hey, why are you cursing? Don't even do that offense. That's against the Lord. And you're like, yeah, hey, I want to hang out with you, right? Um, I love that. That's what we need, guys. We need to be uh, like the Church of Ephesus. They did not tolerate evil. It's not like, oh, I'll tolerate it, right? I, oh, I got patience. I could bear it. No, you don't tolerate evil. And, and Olive Branch, we don't tolerate evil as well, right? Uh, we correct it, and that's why we're always getting in trouble. <laughs> like, ugh. But but Ephesus, I love them. Anyways, let's come to the fourth area of commendation. Uh, it involves their discernment. Their discernment, verse 2. It says, And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars. Uh, there's a lot of people, even today, they're self-proclaimed uh, apostles, right? Uh, where you can ask them, well, 
where did this title come from? Well, I got in, I became a Christian, and I, uh, I realized I'm an apostle. And it's, wait, so you're self-proclaimed? Well, yeah. Well, biblically, there's no such thing as a self-proclaimed gospel or apostle, right? It's like, wait, wait how did you do that? Anyways, uh, this church, they had discernment, right? They could tell uh, those who were telling the truth, and they could tell those who were telling a lie, right? And, and so, according to verse 2, they tested them. You and me, guys, we need to be testing everything. We need to be testing everyone as well. Um, the, the, the way they test people, um, it wasn't based, by the way, on, on what they thought, on what they felt, right? It was based on the Word of God. 1 Thessalonians 5.21, it says, Test all things, hold fast what is good uh, and we use the word of god uh, to test all things right that's that's what we stand on it's the word of god do not believe any word that anyone tells you check the word of god right first and make sure it's what the word of god is saying don't believe me right that's why i encourage notes by the way all the time i it's just take notes be like the bereans right take it back to scripture and and you study yourself to make sure these things are what they are saying to be right uh that's what the bereans did in acts uh what was it Seventeen eleven. they took back what paul was saying to scripture and i think that's a really healthy habit that we as believers ought to have and so uh if we're not guys oh i don't know where to go with that um we I, I pray that we would be a group that's mature in the sense of we go back to the word because there's going to be those that are going to come in and they already have they come in in stealth mode and and they'll 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 pull you away and then they'll whisper this and that and they're like hey i feel this way or i think and that's why you shouldn't be going there right but where's if, if you if you're knowledgeable right if you're mature in the word you can be like where's the scripture right what, what does the scripture say does it say i should be feeling other going where other people feel i should be going or thinking what other people say i should be thinking no you be a berean right stick with what scripture says and that's right stay where you're called uh there's a lot of people that do those whisperings and we, we got to be really careful um <laughs> I got to be really careful because I'm very tempted right now. <laughs> this is all. With, there's so much going on in the church, guys, all the time. Um, and, and, and a lot of the people, they'll say things like, uh, yeah, but what if, right? They won't say what is, what is uh, true, right? They'll say, yeah, but what if? And they'll give you this scenario. And the goal and the, what the, the whole heart of that, the core, is to strike fear. But we're not led by fear, are we? What are we led? We're led by love, Right? Uh, Jesus says you'll, they'll know you're Christians by your love. And so if you're making decisions based on fear, uh, you're not taking a, a check, uh, your heart at the word, right? Um, so anyways, little disclaimer out there, right, for you. There, threw it out there. There you go. Um, let's go to the fifth thing, is the commendation that Jesus gives Ephesus is really, it's their motive. And I didn't really catch this until I was, I was really looking at it, and I kind of took my time, and I was like, wait a minute, they're, that's amazing. It's their motive. In verse 3, catch this, it says, and, and have labored for my name's sake. What? Did you guys catch that? What? All of their toil, all of their perseverance all of their discernment all of their uh, effort all of it was for his name's sake ain't that amazing uh, they were doing it for the right reason they were right on that's amazing uh, in fact in colossians 3 23 uh, paul says and whatever you do do it heartily as to the lord and not to men to ephesus they labored onto the Lord with to the point of exhaustion, right? The, the word patience there. And not to be seen by men, uh, but to be seen by the Lord. I love that. They, they, they had the right motive um, for all of their works. And in the end, we know all our works are going to be burnt up by fire, right? And only what's, what's left after the fire is what's going to stand. So all the chaff is going to be burnt up. Um, and, and those 
uh, who did with the works, with the right motive, that's what's going to stand. So Ephesus, uh, what, what I'm seeing here is that they have something that's going to stand through the fire, through the testing, if you will, uh, which I love. In fact, in Matthew, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 3, he says, But when you do a charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, that your charitable deed may be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will himself reward you openly. Um, again, there are some in church that uh, I've been around ministry long enough, right? And you get to see the certain motives, if you will, of certain men and women. And uh, certain people do things for a badge. They do it for a title, right? They'll do it for, uh, man, I got, I got upgraded in my position to blah, 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 blah. So they make up titles for certain people because they know they chase after titles and they're not going to serve in the church unless they get that title or that badge or that, right? And it's like, ah, oh, I'm so important now. And no, you serve the Lord, right? Don't serve man. There's nothing wrong with name tags and all of that, uh, but it's the heart. That's what matters. That's what God sees. Uh, he, did, he, he, made, he sees your works, uh, but in the end, again, remember, it's going to be tested by fire. So let's come to the final area of commendation. Uh, it involves the Nicolaitans. I, I call them the Nicolaitans. A lot of people have different pronunciations. Uh, I give you the best pronunciation, so you're welcome. Um, just joking. I don't know. It's, it's a good one, though. Uh, look at verse 6. It says, But this you have, that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate, Jesus says. So the Nicolaitans, uh, they're going to be uh, mentioned again uh, to the church of Pergamos in, in chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. Uh, now, we don't really know much about the Nicolaitans, uh, but we do know that they are linked in verse 14 to Balaam. Uh, if you guys remember Balaam, uh, Balaam we know is linked to sexual immorality, also linked to idolatry. And, and so the Nicolaitans, uh, by the way, it's a compound word, Nico, or like Nike, right? Nike means uh, victory or conqueror or conqueror. Uh, some of you guys might be wearing some Nike shoes, right? Or Nike clothing. Uh, and, and it laetos means people. And so the Nicolaitans uh, could be a victorious people, a conquering type of people. Uh, they, it could carry the idea that they are putting uh, people first and not Jesus. And, and so they love people, and this is where their heart was. Uh, and so you can see immediately that Jesus was against it, obviously, because they, uh, they were all about themselves. You guys know people like that? I know like marketing people, they'll, they'll call you or they'll talk to you and they go, oh, hey, how are you doing? They, and then they even ask, they say, how are you doing? And, it, and then you're like, oh, they care about me. Oh, good, man. So uh, let me tell you how I'm doing. And you start to open up as if they care. And they're like, good, 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 good. Anyways, just wanted to tell you, there's this, this product's on sale right now. It's like, oh, you don't care about me, you liar, right? Ugh. So this might be like the Nicolaitans, right? Where they were so caught up on the people, but not Jesus, right? They were that type of people that were, um, anyways, it's, it's interesting. So let's, let's just come to the third section. It involves condemnation. Condemnation. Jesus condemns uh, this church of Ephesus, even though they just received all this recognition uh, for all the good works that they have done, right? Uh, they were working hard. They had the right motive. They persevered. They, um, they had strong convictions. They had great discernment. Uh, but there was a huge, huge problem uh, in the church of Ephesus. Uh, Jesus begins to condemn them for this reason, and that reason is because they left their first love. They left their first love. According to verse 4, look, look at verse 4. It says, Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Now, the word nevertheless, uh, Allah, very, very strong word of contrast, by the way. So in contrast to everything that is good, um, here's the bad, right? They left their first love. And, and notice, by the way, the word this 
uh, is in italics. The word this right there uh, is not in the original text. Uh, so it's not really there. Uh, and so uh, it's interesting the, the, in fact, the words I have is actually a single word, meaning to be. And so it's a verb, right? To be. And Jesus is saying, I be against you. A in other words, he's, he's not saying, I have something against you. He's saying, I am against you. He is the great I am and he's against you. Whoa. Imagine being the church of Ephesus and reading this. I would be like, uh, can we just go back to all the work stuff that we did for you? <laughs> like, wait, what? <laughs> God's against me? How is that even a problem? Like, it, I just, I, I don't see it, right? Uh, that is a problem. Yikes, right? Um, he, he's not saying, well, I have a little situation I want to talk to you about, right? Let's come, come over here. Let me talk to you about this. He's saying, I am against you. In fact, according to verse 4, they left their first love. They left their first love. Notice they didn't lose their first love, right? <laughs> hey, did you guys see my first love? I don't know what I did with it. Where did it go? Oh, no, right? Um, they didn't casually just kind of slip away from it. Uh, it. It was not a little problem, um, you know, in, in the very beginning regarding their first love. No, they, they willingly left their first They, In other words, they divorced their first love. They literally turned their backs and violently, if you will, walked away, intentionally walked away from their first love. They turn their backs on their first. Well, you can't, you can't leave something, think about it, unless you first have something, right? Um, and so they, they use their free will that God gave them. God said, here, I'm going to allow you, you know, for, to be free moral agents. And, and as mankind, as we receive his free will, what do we do? We walk away from him. Thanks. I'll take all of this you've given me, and I'm going to go my way, right? And, isn't that sad? We, we have that choice uh, in the matter. And I know, man, I, we could be here forever, guys. Um, Jesus said uh, in John 15, verse 6, If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they, can, they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they're burned. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 9, 24, Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. Obtain what? The prize. Jesus said there in John 15, Abide in me and I in you. Right? Speaking of a relationship, uh, it's not a... Um, Lord, you know, let me live for you, and, and, but then 10 years later, you gave up on running the race. Who receives the crown in the race? Those who win in the end, right? They pass the, the line, the finish line. Well, maybe not anymore. <laughs> you all receive a prize, right? It's, oh, good job, guys. Well, it used to be that way, right? Those who actually pass the finish line, uh, they get a prize, and it's a wonderful thing. Uh, but we're, we're all called to abide in the Lord. We're all called to simply, that's what God's called us to do, to believe on him. Peter said, right, uh, believe on the Lord Jesus and you shall be saved. The word believe is an action word. Uh, it's an everyday word. It's literally every day believing on the Lord Jesus, living on to Jesus. Um, Oh, there's so much we could go into there. Um, but which it, it astonishes me, though, since you, 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 can, you can love, you know, working hard. You can love enduring hardships. You can bear up under the load, if you will. You can have patience. You can love everything about the Lord. You can love all the gifts that the Lord has given you, right? And, and yet you still can be a person who not loves the Lord back in return. You, you found love more of the things that God offers you, but not God. If you get into the health, wealth, prosperity gospel, uh, it, it's, it, it entices the flesh. Because the flesh wants, well, to be healthy, 
right? I know, I know sickness, and I don't like it, right? Uh, obviously, I want to be healthy. And then there, the wealthy, I mean, who doesn't want to be wealthy, right? It's, and so it, it, it appeals to your flesh. And, and um, that's not what the Lord has for us. As believers, guys, we're going to go through afflictions. We're going to go through all this. We're not promised we're all going to be rich as believers, uh, now that goes against that doctrine, right? I'm, I'm coming against it, uh, but we're, we're, we're told um, not to leave our first love, right? Not, not to forsake the Lord. He'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. Uh, but there's those doctrines out there that will really pull you away, and we got to be very careful uh, with those and, and falling more for the stuff instead of the giver of the stuff. You guys you know what I'm talking about? Um, so we gotta we gotta keep guard, if you will. Uh, and just like we mentioned, by the way, in the beginning, if you lose sight of Jesus Christ while you're going through the Book of Revelation, you missed it all, right? You, you literally missed the point of Revelation because Revelation is all about Jesus. That's what it's all about. It's all about Him. And, but it, as as people, we lose sight of Jesus. And we begin to look over there and over there. And, and the what ifs, right? And the what? And we could go, oh, we got we to gotta just keep your eyes on him. And he's got you, right? He who begun a good work in you will complete it until the end. Amen? He knows what he's doing. He's the good shepherd. And, and we need to just continue to trust in him. In fact, if you lose point, um, uh, you're, if you get your eyes off of Jesus, um, you, you you lost everything in life as well. Jesus said in John fourteen six, "I am the way, the truth, and the life." I mean, He is the life, right? Uh, and if you're trying to live this life without Him, you missed it, right? So uh, keep your eyes on Jesus. In First Corinthians chapter thirteen, verse one, Paul says, "Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but notice this: have not love." Who is love? God is love. 1 John 4, 8, 9, right? God says, uh, well, he's love. Uh, he says, I have become a, a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but I have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. I would hate to be a person that gets burnt and it profited me nothing, right? Come into the presence of God and I got nothing, right? Not, have you guys been burnt, by the way? Uh, a, a good friend of mine, um, Bruce McCaffrey, I don't know if you guys know him, his house burnt down last night, so keep him in prayer. Uh, but he was trying to get out of the garage and, and uh, got burnt on his hand, too. And, and um, I, I was with him all day today, just kind of taking him, you know, to the house, police station, the insurance, and, you know, just all around um, in Little Shoot. Yep. Um, not fun. Not fun. I, I mean, just imagine just losing it all. It's, it's not fun at all. Uh, but it's just stuff, right? It was a good reminder for, for me. It's just stuff. I came home and I was like, what would I be sad about if, if everything just burnt down? And I just kind of looked and I was like, eh, I'll be fine. <laughs> it's, you can replace stuff, uh, but you can't replace people, right? And, and uh, it's, we got to invest in people, right? Continue to love uh, others. And there's a lot that people are going through. If you guys have been watching the news, um, I don't, but I got a little notification thing, a, a little app that I see little top headlines and there's people that commit suicide. There's teenagers, right? They just give up, and, and they're around us. These are people around us. And so what is love, right? If, if love is sacrificial, love is spiritual, but love is giving onto others. It's, uh, you know, that word patience, you know, bearing up under a load. I mean, you endure for the sake of them, not for yourself, Right, if you're in a relationship, but it, but the other person, they're this and they're that. But but if you would just bear for, for them and sacrifice for them and hear what their needs are, just meet it. Right, be be a convenience. Get the dishes done. Get the whatever it is. The complaining starts. Uh, just do it. 
and, and don't, don't want anything in return, that's the heart of God, right? He gives. He doesn't want anything in return. He, that's just his nature. He loves because that's who he is. He's love, right? God is love. And so uh, we need, if your heart is to be more like him, uh, let it show, right, practically in your lifestyle uh, and all that we do. Anyways, let's come to the last section here, and we'll finish here. Jesus exhorts this church uh, really to do three things, three, three, three things. Um, and number one is to remember. In verse 5, he says, Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen. It's so easy, guys, to get our, our eyes off of the Lord uh, when we're laboring for the Lord. Or it's so easy, but it's, it's easy to forget about the Lord. And it's all about him, though, right? We, we forget that. He's, who's in the midst of the church? Jesus is in the midst of the church, right? The seven golden lampstands. And so uh, the second thing is exhortation. Uh, the second exhortation is to repent in verse 5. It says, repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place, unless you repent. This word repent uh, means to turn, to relent, to reconsider, to change, uh, to turn away from your previous actions, your, to turn away from your previous attitudes as well, uh, to head back uh, to, well, your first work, if you will. Uh, and so it's, it's coming back to your first love, right? It's keeping your heart burning uh, for the Lord during the work, because the work never ends, right? It's always going to keep going. I'm afraid, even in heaven, guys, we're still going to have work. <laughs> I looked at in the Bible, like before sin even came, uh, guess who's still told, told, you know, tilling the ground? Adam was, there, there was work, right? So I don't think we're going to get away from it. But uh, because of that, let's make sure that when we are working, that we're doing it onto the Lord, right? We're keeping our eyes on him. He's our first love. But we ought to have that burning desire, that passion, that, that, uh, that more of him, right? That we're doing it onto him, all right? Don't forsake your first love. Don't, don't get caught up in this and that. Uh, you, can get, you can do all this and that. But don't let your heart uh, be more in that than it is in the Lord, right? May, may your heart's desire still be Jesus. And may everything be Jesus, right? Even in death, just give me Jesus, right? I love that. Um, so it, it's amazing because the Lord cares about us. He, he knows what's going on. He sees the work, uh, and he, he's watching, right? And he knows what, what's going on happening so let's come to the third exhortation is it's to receive to receive in verse 7 uh, jesus exhorts us here to receive really two things uh, if you're taking notes in verse 7 number one is what the spirit says what the spirit says in verse 7 he who has an ear let him hear what the spirit says to the churches by the way this is a phrase that's going to be given uh, to all seven churches. They're all going to hear the same phrase. Uh, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches, plural, right? And, and so it speaks of being open to the Spirit of God, right? Listening to the heart of God, uh, to that still small voice, we would say, being directed uh, by the Holy Spirit, which always reminds us of our first love, right? Just having keep that. Uh, one thing that I do, and one thing that I, I, I've noticed in my own life, just stay in the Word. This is, this is the, you want to know the heart of God? Uh, stay in the Word. You want that fire, if you will, burning? Uh, stay in the Word of God, uh, because that is what keeps us going. We need the Word of God. It's like our bread, right? Uh, I mean, it's our daily bread, literally. <laughs> it's the Word of God, uh, and, and we can't I mean, I can't stress it enough. Stay in the Word. Stay in prayer. Uh, it's a beautiful thing. Um, Jesus, but notice right here, he, he also exhorts us in what, what Jesus gives. In verse 7, notice in the middle of verse 7, it says, To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Now, the paradise of God 
speaks of, you guys remember the Garden of Eden? Um, symbolically, looking back to Genesis chapter 2, you guys remember Adam and Eve? Um, they, they couldn't eat from the tree of knowledge, uh, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and, and they, they failed. They died spiritually, if you will. They got kicked out, right? There was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is a tree of, um, uh, that we just read right here. It's a Jesus. You know, one thing I realized, he wants us to be overcomers, right? He wants us to be overcomers. He wants us to have eternal life, according to verse 7. Uh, but notice uh, in 1 John, and we'll, we'll go through this a little later as we go through the churches, because every church, it, there's a promise to the overcomers. And every, every church, is, it's addressed. And so you're questioning, right? You're like, okay, so how do I become an overcomer? There's the answer right there. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, John says, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who, who is he who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. There it is. Your faith, it's just so simple, right? In the end, I mean, what, 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 do you, what do you do when you strive to obtain the prize that Paul's talking about? You just keep the faith. You, you believe on the Lord Jesus. That's all it is. It has nothing to do with your works, right? Um, in fact, in, in, uh, your works just come with, because of your faith. You believe in Jesus, you have faith, those works are naturally going to happen. So works has nothing to do with salvation. It's your heart. It's you keeping the faith. It's you believing on the Lord Jesus. You believed on the Lord Jesus from point A, right, when you were born again. Now, at the very last bit in the breath of your life, do you believe on the Lord Jesus? Are you keeping the faith? Are you walking by faith, right? Uh, good question. And so this church, they were busy doing great things, uh, but I would say they lost heart, if you will. They, they lost, they, they left their first love, right? And, and so may we have a deep love for Jesus. And really, I think we can learn uh, from the church of Ephesus, uh, from, you know, the beginning of Ephesus to the letter uh, here in Revelation. I mean, we got, what, 30 some years. Uh, I forget the math there. Uh, but from Ephesus, you know, Paul went there, gave the gospel, right? A lot of people came to the Lord. Within 30 years, they left their first love. That's all it took, just a short little time gap, and, and they have a whole other life that they're living, right? So sad, but they don't notice their churchgoers, though, right? And they, remember, were they sitting around? No, the church of Ephesus, they were actively involved they, were, they weren't just, right, they were doing works, right, in the church. And they were doing it for the right reasons. They were doing it unto the Lord, right? So they, they weren't letting their left hand know what their right hand was doing. They were racking up those rewards, and they, so they were playing church. And that's why I, I, I stress, guys, may we not play church. Don't get caught up in uh, the tradition of church. Be real. Be active. Be alive. Start serving the Lord if you're not serving the Lord. And, and, and come to give when you come to church, right? Give whatever your, the gifts that God's called you, the calling that he has on your life. Do it. Who's man to say, well, I don't, I don't think you should do that, right? Unless it's, you know, in the area of leadership, obviously we have order in the church, right? <laughs> what are you doing on our leadership meeting, right? <laughs> um, but whatever it is, right? If it's serving, serve the Lord, right? Give unto the Lord. Uh, and you'll be blessed. It's a beautiful thing. So I hope you guys are encouraged. There's a lot of application there. Uh, and I left you guys with a few things, a uh, little question marks right there too, with um, that, I just reread it, right? It's only seven verses, uh, but there's some things I kind of left out on purpose uh, that I definitely want to stress later on uh, about salvation and really my view on, on salvation. And I, I basically gave you the end of it. It's just simply keeping your eyes on Jesus. Keep the faith. Believe on the Lord Jesus. You'll be fine because he, he's got you. <laughs> Amen. Uh, let's go ahead and pray, guys. Lord, thank you so much uh, for this time that you've given us. Uh, Lord, we pray that we would be, um, Lord, not only doing works onto you with our hearts, Lord, uh, but also, Lord, may we, may we keep that desire 
desire. May we keep that passion, Lord. Uh, may, we, may we continue to fall in love with you, Lord, uh, and just staying in your word and hearing from you, Lord, and doing uh, what it is that you called us to do. May we not be babies, Lord, uh, all of our lives. May we grow and be mature uh, in the areas that you called us to. And so, Lord, I think that's my heart. That's, I think that's the heart of everyone here is, Lord, we, we want you. Lord, we want more of you in our lives. And so we need your help, and we know that we can't do it in our flesh. Uh, we desire, Father, to serve you. Um, so be, be pleased with us, Lord. May we run the race um, with the endurance that you give us, Lord, with the resources that you give us. And, uh, Lord, we know that in the end, you're, you're our crown, Lord. We could care less about, we're going to be walking on gold. We don't, we don't care about a golden crown, but we do care, Lord, about giving you uh, the sacrifice, Lord, of, of, uh, of our hearts. Lord, Romans 12, may we live a life uh, that is sacrificial, Lord, it's, it's, uh, to be a, a living sacrifice. Uh, may this life, Lord, be an active just uh, lifestyle, just worship unto you. And so be with us, Lord. Guide us and lead us. We need your Holy Spirit, Lord. May we uh, take heed uh, to the church of Ephesus, Lord, and the rebuke that they've been given. I pray you would do that to us as well. May we examine uh, to see whether we be in the faith or not. And so test us, Lord. May we, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.21, may we test all things, hold fast to what is good. Uh, and, and so... Uh, we love you, Lord, and we thank you for all that you're doing in our lives, and uh, we pray that you would continue in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you guys need prayer, come.